My first relationship began on a very high note, specifically on a bench suspended 100 feet in the air. I was 22, and I had had a crush on this other counselor all summer. On the last night of camp, I told him how I felt, and much to my delight, he returned the sentiment. We were both going to be there in the off-season and the next summer, so there was potential. For our first date, we decided to climb a challenge course element called the Tower of Terror. This was 10 years ago in faraway California, but I still remember the sheer romance of checking each other's harnesses and knots before we clipped into the wires that went up the trees. <laughs> At the top, we sat on a bench looking out over all of camp. When we leaned in for our first kiss, our helmets knocked together. <laughs> Thanks to summer camp time compression, I moved into his cabin three weeks later. <laughs> it was a wonderful first relationship. There was fun and care and new experiences. After what felt like a year, we broke up four months later. <laughs> on New Year's Eve, when he said we would be better as friends. I moved out of his cabin into a tiny house 200 feet away. And I got through this heartbroken stage by going to a dance class in town where we lit a candle each week to Beyonce. <laughs> I did a review of this relationship, and I decided that in my first attempt, I had been a good girlfriend, and he had been a good boyfriend, and I would go from good girlfriend to good ex-girlfriend in a mature way, right? What's so hard about that? Hmm. Well, a few months later, 50 new staff arrived, and one of them caught his eye and I watched them flirt by the salad bar while I sat near the craft shack growing bitter and jealous. <sighs> One morning, I saw the two of them come out of his tent together. Mm. I ran over to my friend and I said the same thing over and over again. I said, please tell me it's just a fling. It's just a fling, right? They're just having a fling. And she said, Tess, she told me truths I didn't want to hear. I wasn't dating him anymore. He could do what he wanted. And also, we were late for breakfast, and it was pancake day. Okay. Well, a few weeks later, I was desperate to scratch the itch that was the bug bite of being a bystander in my ex-boyfriend's love story. So I demanded a conversation with her about how their budding relationship was a problem for me. It's for the good of the camp community if we're honest with each other, I told her as we coiled ropes by the climbing wall. And for some reason, she agreed. <clears throat> well, so I talked at her for a while. I explained how important the relationship had been for me, how hard it was to see them together. And, uh, you know, just, I didn't want her presence around me. And she responded without a hint of defensiveness, as if everything I was saying was totally reasonable. She was warm, she was understanding, and she, she said, I understand, and just in case you're worried about it, it's just a fling. It's not going to go on very long. Hmm. Warm, understanding. I was infuriated. <laughs> I wanted to leave that conversation muttering under my breath, how dare she, and she's not even that nice, and what does he even see in her? But she gave me no fuel for that. She was only kind. A few weeks after that, I went in for a longer conversation. I, <laughs> I cornered her by the lake, and I said, why doesn't he even talk to me anymore? Doesn't he see how hard this is for me? And she said, Tess, I understand this is hard for you, but I want you to know we don't have to talk about him. I like you for you. We could be friends and leave him out of this. Hmm. Well, I wish I could say that I put sisters before misters. <laughs> I wish I could say that I saw her for her and I didn't see her just as a prism through which to see him. <laughs> well, we did hang out a few times, but I never really let go of my self-righteousness. I held on to it like a camper strangling their stuffed animal when they're really homesick. <laughs> on the last night of camp, she pulled me aside and she said, things had changed. They had gotten serious and they would be staying together after the summer. If you have anything you want to say to me, I'm ready to hear it. I know this must be hard for you. I repeated my stagnant lines. I don't like this. This upsets me. How can you do this to me? And I followed up with a real kicker. I said, I really wish you would leave as soon as possible. <laughs> she nodded once again, said she understood how I felt. The summer ended. They left together. I left alone. Over the years, I told this story as if he was the ex she was the nuisance, and I was a victim of the whole thing. 
I got a lot of sympathy when I told it that way. <laughs> Eventually, I saw the characters in a new light. There was a nice guy, an extraordinarily patient woman, <laughs> and an ex who was a dramatic mess for far longer than she was anything else. There are things you learn while you're in a relationship, and there are things you learn while you're the ex. I got a lot from him, but I got way more from her. I got compassion, I got grace. So much of it that I was able to give it to myself over the years and eventually see it for what it was. It was my first time in love, my first time being an ex. How could I not be messy? I wish the two of them and their baby all the best. <laughs> <laughs>